Hey everybody, so I had the chance to sit down with my good buddy David Guzik, who many of you know, amazing Bible teacher and author of, he's put out some wonderful books, I encourage you to check them out. We did a little interview talking about how to read and how to study your Bible, so I hope you enjoy it. All right, well, I am uh, super excited right now. Uh, if you're joining us, uh, thanks for being a part of this. I, I have the opportunity to be interviewing one of my great friends, Pastor David Guzik. David has pastored in California, and then God took him over to Germany, where he uh, led a Bible college and really just was a big part of a ton of the ministries and church plants that were going on there. He continues to be a real driving force to what's happening over there. And, um, and a great friend, and he has written some of the best commentaries. I know probably many of you that are watching this, you have, you've been, you've stolen from David Guzik, just own it, you stole from him. So uh, it's, it's good stuff. David, um, thanks for being willing to do this. I'm very happy to be here, Phil, and you're too kind. It's great. <laughs> I, you're a blessing to me and so many others. It's just great. I'm, I'm happy to spend this time here and with the oh. folks there at Calvary Chapel San Diego. Thank you, and I know they're going to be blessed. And you know, I want to talk about our, our, our topic today, something that I know you're passionate about, is mm -hmm. helping people to get the most out of their Bible reading. Yes. And whether that's from just beginning, like learning to read the Bible, like and how to, how to function, all the way to learning how to study the Bible and, and to be able to present the scriptures. But maybe before we do that, we should just talk, um, how, are you, how are you seeing these things that are going on right now the coronavirus is just kind of ramping up here in the U.S. Any, any perspective you'd want to share with us? Well, Phil, thanks for asking. Uh, we're, I mean, we're doing well. Our family, everybody, you know, I, I don't personally know anybody who has, who knows that they've been infected with the coronavirus. Of course, what we hear is that there may be many, many people who have it but don't know it. But what we don't know, we don't know. Uh, so at this point, uh, none of it has touched us personally as far as the infection, but of course, the entire disruption of life, the disruption of the economy, all of it, that's going to hit everybody in our country and in most places around the world. And so we're trying to figure out, we're trying to sort it out. Um, we're trying to love our neighbor by doing things that would cause uh, them to not be infected. Mm. You know, Phil, I think you and I, we probably have the same heart. We look, we just really believe what God says, to live as Christ, to die as gain. Mm -hmm. If we were to catch some disease and die, wow, we get to go to heaven and be with Jesus. I mean, and sometimes that sounds better than other times. So it's not like we have this great fear of death or dread or anything like that. But Phil, I'll be honest, I, I would be absolutely mortified by the thought that I had passed on that disease to somebody else. And so the things I'm doing, uh, I'm really not doing, you know, washing my hands a lot, being careful about where I go out, right. not going out as much, all that. The, the, these things I'm really not doing in the sake of self-preservation, though I suppose there's a little bit of that. But really, it's I, I want to love my neighbor in the name of Jesus and, and do what's good for public health and public mm -hmm. safety. Isn't that an interesting approach to loving our neighbor right now? Yes. It's yes. so different than, you know, we're kind of always telling each other, Let's get out there. Let's be there. Let's be, you know, let's assist. Let's help. But right now, some of the best ways we can love is by keeping space. Yeah. I mean, you know, Phil, you and I, we were raised in a church environment that we're great, very grateful for that really emphasized action and activity and getting out there and doing it. And look, what a blessing that is. And we're very grateful. But this is an eye opener for us that sometimes the most loving thing you can do is dial it back. Mm. And, and say, okay, we're not going to engage or we're going to look for different ways to engage. Right. And really, that's kind of what we, you and I are doing right now. What, this whole right. thing with the video and the Zoom call and all the rest, it's just a way that we're looking to engage in a different way. And it's interesting because, and I know you and I both share that kind of just missional heart. It's how we see the world. It's how we see, yeah. you know, church and all. And um, I, I've found this to be, you know, in terms of just from a church perspective and like learning how to engage with people. It's exciting to be taken outside of my comfort zone in order to go like, God has a lot of ways to reach people. And I thought I had a big perspective, but boy, God's blowing my mind right now. <laughs> yeah, it, isn't it great? It's, um, you know, I, I suppose it's human nature, at least it's my nature, where I wanna build everything in my life to be comfortable 
and to face as few challenges as possible. I mean, that's how I want to organize my, my world. And I, I suppose that's human nature. Uh, but it's not necessarily kingdom of God. Right. And we do, we look with gratitude to say, you know what, this was a good thing that stretched me and made me trust God in some ways that I haven't had to trust him in a long time. Yeah. And, uh, and we do, and that's a wonderful thing. Wow. Well, thanks for sharing that, David. And I'd love to, so I just want to kind of jump in and get some thoughts sure. from you. Um, right now, we're all in our homes for the yes. most part, unless right. we're a healthcare worker or first responder, those kinds of things. We're supposed to stay home. And yes. so what is, so I, I have to be a Christian at home. Quite often we say that's the hardest mission field, right? Just to learn to be, yes. be a Jesus follower in my own home. And a, a big chunk of that is reading my Bible and learning how to, I think a lot of people get intimidated by Bible reading. Uh, maybe they pick up a passage that was so, so difficult or they're reading in a translation that's so difficult. I thought it would be great if you and I could talk about how to help people get the most that they can out of reading the Bible. And um, just to any any tips and thoughts that you have that could be helpful. So so I'm I'm just starting off. How how would you help me? What, what how would you what would you encourage me to be doing? Okay, for the first person who's just starting off, I'd say first of all, um, choose a Bible translation that really works well for you. That that's a great place to start. Now uh, you know, Phil, isn't it interesting? So many people we who have been Christians for a while we've just kind of been soaked in the vocabulary in the environment of the Christian world. Mm. And sometimes we have very little idea how strange and foreign it is to people who are perhaps new to the faith. And so um, there are people who are new to the faith. They have no idea that there are even different translations of the Bible. Right. It's not even what they've considered. It's a completely right. new idea to them. Best story I ever heard of that was a guy, this is way back when I was at Calvary Chapel, Simi Valley. There was a guy who got saved and, you know, he just a one, look, he was, he was not a believer, living a very pagan kind of lifestyle, genuinely got saved, went into a Bible bookstore to buy a Bible. And uh, the, the guy at the thing says, he says, hey, I, I want to buy a Bible. And the guy says, uh, well, what kind? And the guy says, holy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get the other one. Get the holy. I don't one. want that non-holy Bible. Give me that holy Bible. That's great. Uh, that's such a great. Yeah, it cool. really opens your eyes. I mean, how would the guy know? He yeah. doesn't know. Yeah. But, yeah. I just want the one that says Holy Bible. Yes, that's Hotel right. Yeah. All over the place. Yeah. But but there are translations that are easier to understand. Um, the translation I use in almost all my teaching and preaching work is the New King James translation. I don't think it's the only good translation out there, but it's the one I, I prefer for a few reasons. Um, but there, there's a, another translation that I, I think is really simple and accessible to people. The, uh, the New Living Translation, I think is really good. And if somebody just has trouble with the, you know, the grammar, the syntax, the vocabulary yes. of the New King James, or like the ESV is another popular mm -hmm. choice, the English Standard Version, um, I, I'd go to the NLT and I, I would just have somebody experiment with a few different mm. But have maybe read a chapter in three or four translations, see which ones, find one that, that works for you, and then stick with that and start yeah. reading that. That's mm -hmm. a great place to start. And I love that you said the NLT because I, I, I love reading. You know, I've yes. spent so many years reading from the New King James. It's so refreshing for me to read from the New Living just to get a, it's a, it, it's, it's the same thing, but just a little bit different, like you said, in the grammar, the syntax, the vocabulary, yes. and it refreshes me. It does. And, uh, you know, look, there's no translation that's perfect. There's not. So I, I'm sure there's places in the NLT where I would read and say, oh, well, I, I think they would have, I wish they would have said this different. But look, it's a good translation. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. It's, it's not one that anybody needs to be afraid of. Um, so find a so good, you, find a translation that you're comfortable with and, yes. and, and start like, that's a good starting ground. Yes. And then, um, a great place to set a common question. You know this question. Well, where do I start right. reading in my right. Bible? I always suggest to people, start with the Gospels. Yeah. Just start there. You, you need to know the story of Jesus. Yeah. So just start reading the Gospels. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with starting at Matthew and just reading all the way through to, you know, John. Just read all four right next to each other. There's no problem with that. Um, but then the other big question is, Phil, and I, maybe I'll get your take on this first, is people always know, how much should I read in a right. day? How much? Right. 
Yeah, yeah I don't a, know. That's a great question. Yeah. Um, yeah. I was just reading a, um, uh, like a kind of a devotional guideline by Tim Challies. Is that his, yes. I don't know how to say his last name. I, I think that's how you say it. Is that, he said, you know, better to have five minutes of comprehension than 15 minutes of nothing. Yes. I, I thought that was such a great, you know, certainly I think more than five minutes is a good idea, but I love the idea of like, let's focus on understanding rather yes. than just, you know, mundane. I read it. I finished the whole chapter. I didn't understand one word of it, but I, I read through it. So I love your idea. I also love if I if I would say uh, to the gospel ideas, I think reading a narrative is easier to start. Yes. Isn't it? Okay. Is, isn't that the other thing that like, especially beginners need to understand is that the Bible's not a book. It's a library. Right. And it's really filled with all these different kinds of writing and literature. Right. And, and the, the books that tell the story, the narrative books, man, that's where you want to start. So what would that be in the New Testament? That'd be the gospel and Acts. Right. And then you have so many books in the Old Testament that fit that same idea. It's telling the story of God working in and through his people. Mm. I, I would recommend that before you get into the poetic books, mm. before you get into the prophetic books, it would be great to go through and just read everything in the Bible that's narrative first. And so, and so it kind of gives people some permission as well. I think what you're saying is a freedom to say, you don't have to start at the very beginning of the Bible and read straight through. It's okay to, the Bible is a library. It's yes. 66 books. It's okay to yes. not start at the beginning of this because it's so many different books. That's right. And, you know, something, okay, I'm, I, I don't want to speak negatively of like read through the Bible in a year plans, but let me say, um, I think an unintended consequence mm -hmm. of some of those plans is that it's given people a sour taste about Bible reading. Um, it, they've plunged them into an order of the books that maybe isn't as good for them, at least in a first read through the Bible. And as well, those read through the Bible, things, I mean, I know they're not trying to do this, or maybe they are, <laughs> but they could cause a tremendous amount of guilt. Oh my gosh. Every time you look at your Bible, you're filled with guilt. It's like, yeah, and, and it becomes, yeah, it, it, and there are many negative unintended consequences with those. Although, look, I know they've worked beautifully and wonderfully for some people, but certainly not for everyone. No, no, I'm eight days behind on my Bible reading plan, okay? <laughs> I've been reading every day, but I forgot to use the Bible reading plan on my app, and it keeps reminding me of that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> so I'm getting in trouble. And you're right. I think when you read through the Bible on those apps or through a Bible that's a one-year reading plan, great idea. The problem as well is you end up in some hard books very early on. Yes. And you get very discouraged. Yes. Quickly. Yes. So, so uh, yeah. especially if somebody is, ha has never really connected with Bible reading or they're reconnecting with Bible reading, right. I would put a big emphasis on first reading through the narrative books, the books that tell the story, the history of what God has done. So, so I start in a narrative. So I, I've picked a translation that kind of just seems to flow for me. And that might... That might be, I'd suggest that they, you know, read a chapter, read Matthew 1, read it in a couple different translations, see which one works yes. for you. And okay, so I start reading. And I think that it's important to say, you know, this might not be the case all the time, but right now in the season of life that we're in right now, we're at home. We can make yes. some time to read the Bible. Yes. <laughs> Work is at home. Life is at home. It's good to prioritize that into our day. Now, do you... Do you recommend to people a, a, a consistency in their time or say, I'm a morning person. Should I read in the morning? Is there a time that you would prefer? Or how would you talk to people about that? Well, I, I would say it, it's good to have your Bible reading time when you're at your best. Mm. If you're a morning person, then carve out some time in the morning. If you're an evening person, carve out some time in the evening. Um, so that, that's generally the approach I take. Do, do it so, you know, don't, you're, don't make you're it an afterthought. Best. Yes, yes. And you know, if you are the evening person and you're barely awake in the morning, man, why, why are you torturing yourself with trying to have your Bible time then? And then the same thing holds for you otherwise. You know? So find a time when you're, when you're sharp, when you're alert. Okay. Um, it kind of follows that principle too. You know, the, in, in the uh, Old Testament, you have this principle of giving God the first, hmm. the best. And, and so whatever it is in your day that you kind of is, is good and sharp and that carve out some time during that part of the day to really give attention to God and his word. Very, that's a great word. And so, so I sit down at my, the best time of my, for me, and um, 
Now, is there a danger? And maybe, maybe, you know, maybe you could just mention this briefly. I'm going to, I'm going to get started and I'm going to try to do too much. And, you know, is it better to like, say, I'm going to read a chapter a day or two chapters or even less? Is it, is it, is consistency in that better than I'm gung ho and then day four I'm exhausted and I'm burned out by the whole process? Okay. I, I think it's nice if you carve out a, a period of time, but I, I would not think so much in terms of time time. Okay. I would not think so much in terms of length of Bible reading, Good. but I would think in terms of meaning. Mm. Look, I mean, one way to express this, and I, I know you could take this principle too far, but basically read until something really connects, until yeah. it hits you, until God speaks to you in and through his word. And who knows, that, that might take a few verses and you really meditate on that and pray through that, uh, or it may take a chapter or something like that. But um, I, I try to avoid the things in regular Bible reading that make uh, things be kind of mechanical. Right. As if I'm putting in my 15 minutes, my 20 minutes, my half hour, whatever I've done. Um, I've read my two chapters. Right. I've done something like that. No, it, it, instead I'm really looking for time connecting with God in and through his word. And so I'm going to let him speak to me through his word mm -hmm. and meet with me in and through his word. So, so there's something to be said for the attitude of say, read until you, um, until you see something that really engages until, until you, the Holy Spirit speaks to you in and through his word. Mm -hmm. and, and we know when that, you know, when that happens for yes. yourself. And, yes. and um, man, I just love that. So it's quality over just quantity. Yes. And now that does require something. It requires, um, first of all, a prayerful approach to the scriptures. You know, ju just a brief prayer. Lord, I come to you now. I'm going to read your word. Would you please speak to me through your word? But then also it, it requires what I would just call a very simple reading of God's word. Phil, the more I go on, the more I see that one of our big hindrances to understanding the Bible is that like we're trying hard to understand it wow. or we're trying hard to find something super profound in the Bible wow. that we've never seen before or nobody has ever seen before. Wow. And, you know, that, that kind of struggle for the deep or the profound, look, just say, Lord, put my heart in a simple, clear place and speak to me through your word. And I think people will be surprised at how just the simplicity and the clarity of God's word can speak when we're not trying to make it something really fancy and deep. I wonder if there's people who will watch or listen to this and be like, they're, they're, the, the way they're used to hearing from God is from pastor speaking out. And this is an adjustment where we're saying, we, God speaks to us well, we're reading his word. Yes. His Holy Spirit speaks to us. And yes. um, what, what would you tell them to be, what are they looking for or listening for, I guess is what I'm, you know, obviously we're not talking an audible voice out loud, most talking about something in the heart. I'm reading well, through, yeah, go ahead. Th there's some basic questions to keep in mind as you're reading. Okay, here's a fundamental question. What does this show me of? about who God is. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you can rephrase that in another way because there's a sense in which it's the same question. What does this show me about who Jesus is? Right. I mean, it's, but I mean, what does this show me about who God, who Jesus is? Mm -hmm. And that's something really um, important to just keep in mind. If you're reading through the gospels, here I am reading through the gospels and I just want to be astounded and say, look at how loving Jesus mm -hmm. is. Yeah. Jesus is so filled with love. Matter of fact, I don't know if I've ever met another person so mm -hmm. filled with love as I see Jesus right here. And of course you haven't. But look at how powerful Jesus is. And you know, on, on that, so what does this really show me and tell me about God? Mm -hmm. number one? Uh, another question I ask is, what does this show me or tell me about myself? Right. Um, it's, it's speaking to me. Um, it's exposing me sometimes in my sin and frailty and weakness. Sometimes it's speaking to me as the strength and the um, ability, the, the privilege that I have as a son or a daughter of God. 
Right. And so what does this show me about me? I mean, right. I think those are two great, great places to wow. start in regard to that. So that, that, that's one place to emphasize this. Wow. And then I, I always think of two terms. Are, are there promises here that God is speaking to me? Or are there um, commandments or requirements that God is speaking to me about in this passage? Now, th there's a lot of other kind of ancillary questions we can ask, mm -hmm. but I think those four questions to keep those kind of top of the mind, man, you're going to have a fruitful time of study just doing yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I, I've even, you know, and I, I've shared this with people. I'm curious to get your take on this. Like, I think when we've been a Christian for a while, and we've read through passages, sometimes our, our mistake is that we you know, we, we start reading only the underlying verses now. Yes. You know, I've been reading, I've read, oh, that was so great. I, you know, I'm reading the underlying. But I also have seen this thing, and I'm curious your thought on this, of we're, we're so wanting to be good Christians that we, we start putting ourselves in the place of Jesus in the stories. Mm -hmm. This is how Jesus spoke to this person, so I should be like Jesus. I found for me, I get so much more out of my Bible reading when I'm the other guy in the story. Yes. You know, when I, I'm the blind guy, I'm the leper, I'm the Pharisee, I, I'm the one that's needing to be broken down. Yeah, it's kind of like, especially when you're reading the Gospels, let's let Jesus be Jesus. Right, right. And we'll be the other people. Right. We'll, we'll fit the other people. Uh, but we'll let Jesus be Jesus and, and see our need in those other places. Because we can end up, you know, like, well, this is how Jesus spoke to this person. So that's how I should speak to people. And yes. There's, there's, there's something fine about yeah, that. In yeah, there, there, sure. There's something in that, but that shouldn't be the main takeaway. Yeah. And, and isn't that an important, I mean, would you, uh, what would you say to this? Like, I mean, we're, we're, we pastor and we teach a lot, we teach the Bible a lot of times, but all the way down the scale, I can't be reading for what I would say to someone else. I, I, I got to get it for me. Exactly. Well, and of course, this is a great danger for pastors and preachers, isn't it? Yeah. To, to only read the Bible for what we can tell others about it, instead of first letting it speak to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's a big disconnect for a lot of preachers and teachers that needs to be avoided. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you know, I'm, I'm flattering just to say you're a highly intelligent person. You've been reading the Bible a long time. You have a great sense of the context and, 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 and the language issues and all these things. What do you say to the person who doesn't have those things? They might still be smart, but this has not been their field. You know, you and I, this is what we do. Right. What would you say right. to that person who, hey, I don't have all those commentaries and, and I don't have Greek or Hebrew or the context. Can I still get as much out of the Bible? Well, he, here's the thing is that this is the, like the, one of the miracles of God's word. And for me, it's one of the testimonies of the divine nature of God's word is, Phil, look, you, you and I, we've been doing this a long time. I mean, we, we've committed our lives yeah. to the study and the teaching of God's word. Not that that's the only thing we do in ministry, right. but it's a big part of it. Um, and, you, you know, we, we feel that we haven't plunged the depths of it at all. Yeah. We're still amazed and enthralled. So I, I take it as a measure of divine inspiration that the Bible is so deep that it's inexhaustible for people who've been studying it their whole life. But it is also has such a clarity and a simplicity that the person who's a brand new believer or just coming to the faith can read simple things in the Lord and be, yes, look, I'm just going to try to read it in simplicity and let God um, speak to me in and through his word. I, I think that that person doesn't need to be, they don't need to be discouraged that somebody sees more mm. um, from a passage than they might. Um, they just need to be very grateful for, yes, God spoke to me in this passage. And uh, maybe I'll learn from some others that God had spoken more to about a particular passage. But yes, I, this is God's word for me too. Um, yeah, that's, that's one of the great I mean, evidences. You've read this several, you've read through the Bible. I mean, uh, sure. the Lord only knows how many times. And you've read something and it spoke to you in a way totally different than it did the time before. Yes. Or, or things, Phil, you and I, we've both had this experience. It's like, 
who put that in my Bible? I've yeah. never noticed that before. This is amazing. Did you see what it says right yeah. there? I mean, we, we've had that experience. It's really well, wonderful. I was like, how is that possible? I've read this yes. before, but I had never read this before. You know? Exactly. And exactly. I, I was it's thinking part too, of the wonder of the word. It is, yeah. Isn't it? I mean, it's yeah. what keeps us. Um, yeah. I mean, it's just, that's the beauty of God right there. I, I was remembering something that Pastor Chuck shared once when he said, he had been studying for this passage. He was so excited. He had been looking at the Greek. He had been looking at context and history. He was so excited to bring this word. And a little old lady from his church grabbed him before service and said, you know, the Holy Spirit spoke this to me from the passage you're about to teach. And I wanted to share it. And it was the same thing. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, tremendous. that's how God works, right? That's how God yes. works in our lives. Yes. So, so we, we, um, so any one of us, any, at any level, at any comprehension level, God can speak into our lives when we'll give the time to getting into his word. Yes, he will speak. Again, I, I want people to approach their Bible reading with faith. Yeah. God will speak to me in yeah. and through this. Wow. I, I'm not going to understand everything. Nobody's going to understand everything at the Bible, especially at any one occasion of sitting down. But God has something to say to me in and through his word. Mm. God has a way to meet with me, to connect with me. His word is a place of fellowship, not just a place of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And let me ask you that, like, um, I, I'm, I'm curious your thoughts on this. Um, so I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to read my Bible, and I'm, God's going to speak to me, right? I'm, I'm expecting God to speak. So yes. do I need to, um, this is a practice I had for a while, and I'm curious your thoughts on it. There's times when I would be reading, and I had no idea what I was reading. It just, it was not, I'm reading, you know, let's say I'm in Isaiah or Ezekiel. I had no idea what was going on, even in narratives at times. And I got into the practice of putting a little question mark in the side of my Bible and, and just leaving it and being, yes. and is it okay? I guess what I'm trying to say is, is it okay for people to read and not understand certain things and not to kick, you know, not to beat themselves over that? Phil, that's a great point. And let me give you a, 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 a similarity with this. It's kind of like learning a language. Mm. You know, when you're learning a language, uh, there's going to be a lot that goes on around you language-wise that you don't understand. Wow. You just, it goes by, but you, you pick up a few things and the proportion of things just continues to grow if you'll stick with it. Wow. And, and I think that's what people really need to do is they really need to say, okay, as I study the Bible more and more, I'm just going to become more and more conversant. I don't need to be discouraged by the things I don't understand. It's not saying I'm a dummy. It's not saying I'm unspiritual. No, not at all. It just means there's depths. I, I, I just want to read and then, and then find the things that where God really does speak to me. I love that thing you're talking about. Put a little question mark next to it. Go, come back to it later. God will speak to you in and through it. Wow. Well, it's, I mean, and I want to wrap up here and not take too much more of your time, but it's like, I love what you're saying there. It's, there's hope that I can, yes. I can sit down. The eternal God is going to meet me when I open yes. his word, it's still alive. It's so fresh for right now, for today. Um, any final thoughts you'd want to pass on there? Okay, I do want to say one more thing, okay? What we haven't discussed at all. Yeah, we'll take is, it all. We'll keep going. <laughs> yeah, should, should, I, should I be reading from a book or can I read from a screen oh, when yeah. it comes to reading my Bible? And, you know, look, I, I, I'll read my Bible from a screen, but th there's something about reading it from a book that's important that you can transfer over to a screen if you feel like you need to use a screen. Here's, you just have to remind yourself when you're reading the Bible, that it's easier to do with a book, but you can do it with a screen. You're saying, this is not like everything else I read on a screen. Mm, yeah. What we're used to when we're reading from a screen, Phil, you know, we read and we swipe, we read and we swipe. We're glancing, we're scanning. Yeah. We're not reading intently, really trying mm. to understand and go slow and let it be clear. We're, we're just scanning. And, and there's not much satisfaction in Bible scanning. Right. There's a lot of satisfaction in Bible reading. Wow. Wow. Now, if, you know, if whatever, if it works for you, okay, no, I really need to use, read it from my screen, fine. But just consciously tell yourself, I'm going to read this not like I read everything else. I'm not going to scroll through this like I scroll through my social media feed. Right. I, I'm going to read it deliberately, carefully, and let God speak to me about it. That, I mean, that's, so we have to know our own rhythms. So yes. if I can't read the Bible on my phone in that way, if I'm just going to be scanning, then it'd be better for me to just put that down, 
and get into the paper Bible. Absolutely. Take out a paper book so that you can tell yourself, okay, th I'm going to read this not like I read my screen. Yep. Wow. And now, what do you feel about, um, what do you think about, like, is, is it important? Is it necessary? Or is it just a good idea? Note taking. Yes. Um, I I'll tell you uh, something that revolutionized my own walk with God and my own understanding of the Bible. Yeah. And I've done this, I think, three times. It's been a long time since I've done it. But when I was a fairly young believer, I don't even know where I got this. I, I, I don't remember hearing it from somebody. Mm -hmm. Maybe I did. But I said, okay, I'm going to read through my whole Bible. And I'm going to make a one sentence summary of every chapter. And I did it like in a journal. And I, I still have those little spiral books somewhere around. Phil, let me tell you, that was a revolution in my Bible reading. Wow. Because I had to read and pay attention so that I could give. And again, I'm not journaling my thoughts and feelings. Okay, there's a place for that. If people do that, that's, that's great. But this says, all right, I'm going to read this for real understanding so that I can summarize the theme of this chapter in one sentence. And man, that was a great thing for me to do. They were reading for comprehension. Yes. Because um, yes. I do feel like people get lost in the forest. Yes. You know, you read something and you're like, oh, that was great. But I don't have, see how it connects to the bigger picture. And to write one sentence each chapter. Wow. That's, yeah. Yeah. that's keeping the big picture. Fantastic. Oh, my gosh. I can't thank you enough, David. This is so, I know this is going to be helpful for so many people. And just to get to spend time talking with you about the scriptures. Uh, we just love you guys so much. Thank you, Phil. Love you. Love your cat in the background. You, you had your cat, cat there in the back. I, yes, I saw your cat. Yeah, it looks like a nice cat. So, <laughs> and again, thank you. Just love what God's doing with you guys down there in San Diego. And uh, it's always a blessing and benefit for me to speak with you. Well, listen, when things open up again, I know everybody at our church is going to beg to say, we got to get Pastor David Guzik to come down and teach in person. So, so Let's we'll do get it. you down here. Yeah. All Fantastic. right. Take Thanks, care. Thanks, Phil. Thank you so much for watching our service online. Moving forward at this season, we want to remember these things as a church. We want to remember to be faithful in prayer. Let's pray for those that are sick, for those that are at risk, for our government, and for God to just change things. Number two, let us remember to be faithful in service. As Christians, let's lead by serving one another. And finally, let's be faithful in generosity. At these times, we can kind of look inward, living life close-handed. But let's go ahead and look outward and live life open-handed as Christians, helping one another. If you'd like to give to this church, you can do that at calvarysd.com give, or you can do that by giving on our Calvary SD app. For a time, we might not be able to gather at church together on Sunday morning, but we can have church anywhere, and we're going to have church online. So be checking out our online services every Sunday morning, and be looking on Instagram, Facebook, and our Calvary SD app for more content during the week. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you soon.